Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Professor Tim Wu. Well, I want to begin by uh, thanking the, the dean for um, giving a better summary of my work than I ever have, <laughs> I have to say that much, and also for inviting me to speak. Um, more formally, Dean Fisher and members of the faculty, graduates of the class of 2015, their friends and family, it is my great pleasure to celebrate with you your accomplishment, your real accomplishment of graduating with a Juris Doctorate degree from the University of Connecticut. I would say even in our relatively jaded times that graduating law school cannot fail to be a moment of serious pride. You know, it's one thing to graduate from college, it's exciting, but graduating from law school is so much more. I mean, you get, if you want to, you can put Esquire after your name, Esquire. <laughs> um, you now speak more random pieces of Latin. <laughs> than anyone outside of a, uh, uh, probably a Catholic priest or a classic scholar, res is the locator per se, all these things are familiar to you. And a certain way, once you graduate from law school, once you become a lawyer, you actually can never go back. You can never, ever again look at the word reasonable. <laughs> the way a reasonable person does. <laughs> Words like jurisdiction or, or uh, the rule against perpetuities, they have this meaning and it's, that's too late. I, sorry, you cannot ever uh, go back. Um, well, it may, uh, in my remarks today, it may either uh, relieve you or disappoint you to say I'm not really going to talk about the internet or net neutrality or anything like that. Uh, rather, I'm going to talk about the next five years of uh, the, your lives of graduates. Um, I would have to say that the next five years are, are really probably going to be some of the most formative in your life. Um, I, it, there may have been a time when all uncertainty disappeared for life as soon as you got a law degree, but we don't live in those kind of times. We live in times of uh, uncertainty, and I think there's no reason uh, to deny that. And also, you may be one of these people, I certainly was one of them, who... Um, I want to say there's two kinds of law students usually. There's some people who very clearly know what they want to do with their life and you know, have it kind of mapped out. I was certainly not one of those kind of people. And there's another kind of person who has done everything possible, put off decisions for a very long time. And if you're that kind of person, I suspect the next five years is going to become a period where you're really going to start making uh, uh, serious decisions about your career. Uh, so the next five years, I'm going to suggest, will be challenging, but approached in a certain way will be some of the most fruitful and meaningful parts of your life. So as I said earlier, when I was in law school, I was uh, in the second camp of law students who really didn't have a sense of what they wanted to do or why they were in law school or what was going on. I had some ideas. Actually, I had a really bad idea. <laughs> um, I had this idea that I wanted to be an international lawyer. Now, I should say that I had no particular, I, I didn't actually know any lawyers uh, in undergraduate. I had no idea what an international lawyer was, but I had this idea that that was what I wanted to be. And I think it was mainly based on the idea that you got to travel for free. <laughs> I was talking with this with uh, Alexi, uh, otherwise known as Professor Lahav, uh, last night. We were talking about how, as law students, somehow that seemed like the most important thing. Like, more important than a career, more important than doing good for the public was getting on a plane for free. <laughs> uh, somehow the concept of buying, I don't know. So I had this idea to travel around and, um, you know, maybe uh, somehow going to go to Asia and sit in a conference room. I, I imagine sort of glass and steel and, you know, um, speaking multiple languages at once. All, all those things seem really nice. The, the word international itself seemed to perfume the air you know, add kind of a glamour to what was uh, generally paper shuffling. Um, now, the weird thing about this, this sort of fixation or obsession with international lawyering that I had is actually I had no qualifications for that job at all, and in fact was, in reality, something of a computer geek and a science guy. Um, yet somehow, for some reason, it did not occur to me that my existing skills that the things I was actually good at ought be something I would make my career in. That that like, very obvious point never occurred to me. I had this fascination, which is a dangerous fascination, 
with things I was not good at, <laughs> things I did not know. Now, you know, there's some room for tourism and so forth, but I want to suggest that for your career, that the fascination with things you are actually bad at is something you need to drop. <laughs> And so I'm going to arrive at the first of my sort of three mini lessons or, or points in the speech. And that is this. Your career in the law will be an awfully lot easier, more enjoyable, if you happen to end up doing things that you are good at. I mean, I can simplify it as find out what you are good at and, and do that. Now, I know, <laughs> I know that that sounds in some tension with the idea you know, usually expressed in college graduations, that you should follow your heart. Um, I'll say one or two things about that. One, that this is law school, not college. But <laughs> <laughs> also, second, that the two ideas aren't necessarily that contradictory. Because the things you love are often very vague. You know, I like, maybe you like business, or maybe you like entertainment. Maybe you have some better reason than me to like international uh, uh, law. Um, but what people are good at is not an area. It's usually an individual skill or some attribute you have. And this uh, lends me the second of my points for the next uh, two years. It's important to be, if possible, very honest with yourself about what you are good at and what you are not good at, which is challenging and it you know, is, is, takes some self-reflection and so forth. Um, but the things that are, people are good at tend to be, take a form of a verb. Maybe something like writing, organizing, presenting. I often think it's useful to think about a job and divide it into what are actually the verbs. Not what does it sound like, you know, what is the general feel, but what do you actually do day to day. And the fact is that lawyers can be successful with all kinds of skills. I mean, perhaps, I'll just give an example, maybe you're very hardworking, sort of like a marathoner. That's a very, uh, actually common among lawyers, and an incredibly useful talent if you have it. Um, some people are very naturally social. They can walk into a crowd. Everyone's like, you know, I really like that guy. I really like that guy. You know, she, like, very, uh, you know, you shake hands well. Sounds a little more like business school, actually. But, <laughs> but um, you know, that, that is a skill that some people have, and some people have less of it. Maybe you're very organized, incredibly useful skill. You can run a highly complex project. Um, maybe what you have is everyone always notices that you see things differently than other people. So you come at a problem very differently. Or maybe you can just solve really hard problems. Sometimes a talent is that you combine two things that are very rarely found together, like being a tax lawyer who can make normal conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, that was our last dean, actually. He, he had those two skills. So if, if, uh, if you compare this to sports, people in sports understand this very well. If you're someone who's seven foot tall um, and, you know, you play center in basketball, you don't sort of secretly long to be a, to be a point guard or something like that. Uh, you don't see sprinters like Hussein Bolt trying to sweat out the marathon. You know, Hussein Bolt's a very interesting guy because as opposed to lawyers who have billable hours, he has billable seconds. <laughs> He's got nine of them in one day and is done. Anyway, the point of this is that it's very easy to understand. I think we all can tell what we're, you know, as if you're active at all, what your physically talents lie. But you should do the same kind of thing when you approach your career in law. Is take a long look and, you know, from noticing feedback and so forth and what am I uh, good at. So how do you find out as a lawyer where you uh, belong? You'll find out as you talk to lawyers that most of them have kind of often have one or two turning points, and I'll talk a little bit about some of mine. So I did try this idea of being an international lawyer. I got a free flight to Hong Kong. I was very excited about that. Uh, and there I was in a glass steel tower. It was uh, ready. I had a nice office, everything. I was, um... But then I guess it took about a week, maybe two days, before I realized I was really, really bad at the job. <laughs> um, this was project financers. It sounded very nice. Project finance, building uh, you know, power plants in China or something. Um, but what it meant in practice, the job was raising money for foreign companies in the United States. And it required keeping track of an enormous number of documents, making sure they were done right, uh, and kind of keeping the whole project together. And it was something I was not good at at all. You know, maybe that's why I'm in academia. But <laughs> I, 
In fact, it was pretty clear to me. I had a moment where I was sitting there and I realized not only was I worse at this job than the lawyers, I was also probably worse than most of the secretaries, paralegals, and frankly had less value to anyone in that office, may, even below the guy who delivered the sandwiches, who everyone seemed to like. No, it, was, uh, it, was, it was clear to me, and I remember I was like, sitting there realizing this. And you know, when, it, when you feel it, it's, it, you'll know it. Like, I, this is not interesting or I'm not good at this. Um, the other thing, you know, the, same, the next year, maybe the same year, I took a class in intellectual property, and a class in internet law, cyber law, it was called back then. And the class seemed so easy. I thought there was a mistake. You know, I wrote the exam and I was like, well, that was like a joke. What do you mean? That was too easy. And in some ways I had that problem again. It was because it was so easy. I assumed it couldn't be a useful thing to do with my life. But when you notice something, it's just easy to you and easier than other people. When you notice that you're at the end of the class, whatever, and you haven't even broke a sweat, and other people it, it seem to find it challenging, maybe that's a little bit of a sign, whatever it is. Again, looking for that information, like what am I good at? It's because it's not always that uh, uh, obviously. Now, I should add some caveats to that. Um, you know, to get your foot in the door, you sometimes have to start doing stuff you don't necessarily want to do. And, and it's often true that the work in law at the bottom is not as interesting or exciting as the work uh, further on. So there, there's, you know, I gave it a week and maybe that was too impatient, but um, you should, you know, sometimes hold it out a little bit longer. Um, also, sometimes, you know, something is hard, but you can develop this instinct. There's this distinction between, I guess I would say, I'm not good at this now, but I see I could be good at this, versus I'm not good at this now and you know, it's not, this is just doesn't work for me. And that is a subtle thing, and I can't really tell you how to parse that difference, but that, that is kind of the challenge over the next uh, five years. Um, I'll say that when I ran for office last summer, it was um, uh, something, I, I learned some of these lessons again, because running for office was like back to ground zero. And this happens a lot in your career. You reach a new stage, and it's back to ground zero. You know, many people will practice law for a while, maybe they'll go in-house, and then suddenly it's sort of a whole new set of skills maybe or different sets of skills. So this keeps happening. And the same like learning the skills is a big point. And I noticed that uh, to politics um, involved a, a number of, of skills, um, one of which is you had to run to a room of strangers and, and shake everybody's hands and, and, and that actually is a, is a skill. Um, and also things like being on, on television a lot. And I realized with television, I realized actually, I had to admit myself quite early on that I was terrible at it, that somehow I got very nervous in front of the TV, but I worked on it. I thought there is potential. You know, I do a lot of public speaking. I can sort of learn to relax. And, and basically what I learned to do television is you just have to make your sentences much shorter. <laughs> that was the end and just like whoosh, get to the point and go on. So. Anyways, I, I want to say that many years out of law school, and I think you'll find this five years from now, it is amazing what people end up doing. You know, in some ways, uh, un unpredictable. Uh, there was one woman I knew who was um, quite flighty. She had trouble uh, finding work. She didn't have a job, I remember. A fond of the drink, I'll say that. Um, <laughs> somehow, somehow she found the field of bankruptcy. I don't know why, and she loved bankruptcy. Moved to Seattle as a partner, prominent bankruptcy uh, attorney. That was, I don't know, she just found bankruptcy. Uh, another of our classmates, um, name was Samantha Power, she was um, kind of a radical human rights type, disdained everything, you know. Uh, we drank a toast, she drank to drink toast, the downfall of the bourgeoisie and things like that. Um, <laughs> she'd been a freelance reporter in Bosnia, very cool, whatever. Uh, she stuck with human rights. At some point, she kind of changed, became very political, uh, went and worked in the White House. Uh, now is the United Nations States ambassador, the, you know, U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, as we speak. And I would have never expected that. She was just completely an anti-institutional kind of person, and now she is uh, within an institution. So, <laughs> United Nations. Um, so. Now let me learn, turn to my, I think I had my second point, my third point. Uh, no, this is my, oh, I can't remember. Um, <laughs> so uh, getting back to my point is I hope that you see all the jobs, all the times over the next five years in some lens of both finding a career, making a living, and so forth, but also as experiments 
where you are learning about yourself and learning what in a career, what in a job works for you, what makes you happy. And I would aim less for like this, like every single moment of my life is bliss, because that is pretty rare in a job, even in a really, in fact, it's impossible. Maybe the Dalai Lama has that feeling, but I bet he's got like paperwork and stuff too he's got to do, you know? So I wouldn't aim for like, oh my goodness, this is like the most, it would be like this works. This is satisfying. I can do this. You know, I can see myself comfortably doing this for a long period and I, I go home and I feel a sense of satisfaction. That is really what I think is, a, what, uh, is that feeling uh, to look for. And if you can find that, then you know you've, you've got something really, I'm good at this and it's satisfying. Um, so let me move to my real last of three points. Uh, I want to say to you, the graduates, that in completing both this law degree and your college degree, of course, you have already proven that you can face a challenge and you can prove that you can beat it. It takes a measure of discipline and perseverance to get through college, get through the JD degree. And I want to say whatever skills that got you this far will get you over the next five years and will, will, will guarantee your success in the world if you listen to what you were good at. So I want to offer my congratulations again and I want to welcome you to the ranks of men and women who are learned in the law. Thank you very much.